Hey there everybody, it's Mark Crowley. I'm back with another video. I'm doing something today that I've wanted to do for quite a long time, and that is a video that focuses on uh, pages uh, in comic books and the layouts and paneling uh, that uh, people do when they do comic book storytelling. And I'm going to use as my examples, of course, my own series, uh, Brody's Ghost and uh, Mickey Falls. And uh, to make it a little more interesting, I've decided to do a countdown <laughs> of my favorite methods of paneling and page layouts, uh, going uh, from 10 up to number one in terms of the uh, techniques that I consider most important. So let's not waste any more time. Let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so at number 10, I put this idea of, uh, you know, at least considering the possibilities of breaking free from panels. And I'm using, uh, for Miki Falls here, uh, a couple of pages that show uh, the effects that you can achieve when you decide to take, like, a character, Miki, here, and, and sort of pop her out of the panel so that we see her sort of head to toe. And then here you see, effectively, two separate panels that kind of blend together. Uh, this is, I put this at number 10 because not everyone is going to want to use these techniques, but it's something to consider, uh, because it allows you to create some very interesting uh, page layouts in which the whole page is considered um, as a single image, in a way, rather than it, it being uh, broken down into separate panels. Anyway, it's something that I got into a lot with Mickey Falls, maybe a little less so with Brody's Ghost. But let's move on to number nine. Okay, so number nine is this idea of using word balloons to convey pauses in speech. And this is from uh, Brody's Ghost, and there's a scene where he's talking about his ex-girlfriend. Now, if you took these two word balloons and combined them into a single word balloon, he would be saying, uh, she was so right for me, I just didn't even have to think about it pretty much all in one breath. But by separating the sentence into two word balloons and kind of placing them at a distance from one another, I believe that the reader will read it more like this. She was so right for me, I just didn't even have to think about it. And that little pause in there, to me, is a little bit like, you know, acting in a movie or something. And so uh, consider the possibilities uh, of where you place your word balloons, and especially if you, if you hear a pause in the speech in your mind uh, as the writer, you can uh, convey that, I believe, uh, by way of the word balloons. Let's move on to number eight. Okay, so number eight, use extreme close-ups sparingly, usually just for big moments. And I'm trying to avoid, um, you know, spoilers here, but this is from Brody's Ghost, book four, and there is this scene where Brody says, I'm not going anywhere. And uh, by zooming in very close, we add quite a lot of drama to that uh, phrase. If, you know, if we pulled way back and we were seeing him from a distance, it just has a different effect. I'm not saying this is necessarily better, but consider the use of the intense close-up uh, for just those dramatic moments. If you're using them all the time, you will kind of drain uh, that technique of its power. And sometimes <laughs> I need to follow my own advice here. I may overdo it in terms of the close-up. So let's move on to number seven. Okay, so sometimes you need the reader to understand where your character is in relation to other uh, characters or other things in the scene. Uh, I had Brody go into this bookstore, and it, it would eventually be very important for the reader to understand where he was sitting in relation to the door. Uh, and so I pulled way up, almost impossibly high. I mean, you would have to remove the ceiling in order to get this view. So that the reader, without you know calling too much attention to it, uh, the reader would uh, just have a sense of where he was in relationship to the that door, and then, you know, again, I don't want to give spoilers, uh, but it eventually pays off later on. So consider that, uh, the use of the aerial view, um, when you want your reader to, to kind of memorize the location uh, of different things in the scene. Very often in your story you'll have a dialogue scene where two characters are talking to each other, and in those circumstances it's helpful to establish a sort of left-right pattern uh, with your character. So here we have Reika, uh, the bad girl character in Miki Falls. In this scene, she's always on the right-hand side of each panel that she's in. Miki always on the left-hand side, and that creates this natural feeling of them talking to each other. Uh, if you start shifting them around and putting them in different places too often, uh, you can kind of make a jarring effect that disorients the reader. So I'm not saying you can never uh, move the camera, so to speak, once you've started the scene, but you want to keep it to a minimum uh, so as to uh, not throw the reader off.
All right, for this one, I've uh, pulled out Mastering Manga, my How to Draw book, uh, to talk a little bit about word balloon placement. Uh, in this panel right here, the reader could get confused as to what panel is read first and what the reading order is supposed to be. Over here, we've sort of arranged things in a path, and that became uh, something that I've really focused on in recent years. I never want the reader to be pulled out of the story wrestling with the nuts and bolts of what should I read uh, next. Uh, we've all had this experience probably of having to stop and, and think, oh no, I read the wrong thing first, I better go back uh, and uh, read over again. Well, let me show you how I take this principle and uh, work it into one of my comics. So here's a page in Miki Falls where I had quite a lot of dialogue to get through on a single page, and I decided to sort of put uh, all of the word balloons into a sort of an S shape here. Uh, I sometimes refer to this as text snaking when I have uh, a lot of word balloons like this. Uh, why not just get them into a path so that the uh, reader knows exactly what to read next? So here's one of these double page illustrations from Brody's Ghost. It establishes a location um, with quite a lot of detail. Uh, some of you may remember me doing a, a video in which I showed myself inking this illustration. Now you know how it turned out. Uh, but one of the advantages of doing this is the readers can hold this image in their minds as they read the book and then uh, uh, as they proceed through the scene they still have a sense of where these guys are. And then you can also consider uh, the final frame uh, being a, a wide shot like that. Also has that sort of Hollywood movie, you know, pulling the camera back uh, feeling. Again, you know, none of this is supposed to be like rules you have to do this. No, by all means do, do things your own way. But I find that these things have uh, served me well in the past. Okay, so I've tried to avoid spoilers uh, in this video, but if the, uh, those of you who are really serious about <laughs> avoiding spoilers, you may want to skip this one here, but uh, it's going to show you an example of a three-panel sequence in which uh, a very gradual change takes place. Um, so, here we go. Spoilers. Um, uh, Brody is holding out his hand. He's got this uh, empty uh, tin can, and uh, panel by panel we see it levitate off of his hand. Um, by making each one of the panels exactly the same shape and putting his hand in exactly the same location, uh, the reader's eye focuses just on what is different between these two panels, and you get this very, you know, hopefully elegant demonstration uh, of a gradual uh, change. So um, consider using this if you have some small moment like this. I will often use this technique for uh, changing facial expressions. You know, like the person is surprised in this panel, uh, then there's a transitional panel, and then Finally, in this one, they're angry, right? So the surprise gradually turns to anger. Um, you know, all, all kinds of uses for this technique. All right, so here I'm actually using an older comic of mine uh, called Akiko on the Planet Smoo uh, as a sort of a cautionary tale. And uh, there's this scene uh, where they arrive on the other side of the planet. And uh, as you do this page turn here, what happens to your eye? Well, it immediately shoots right over to this big panel here. And then you're maybe going to go back up here and start reading. Well, un unfortunately, the surprise has been spoiled. We've seen what is to come, uh, and this possibly dramatic moment moment here of the shadow uh, and the reader thinking, what is it? What could it be? Well, that's been lost uh, because we have uh, arranged it in such a way that the reader already knows what's coming. So let me show you how I uh, m maybe learned my lesson uh, from this and have started to do things differently now. So this is from Brody's Ghost, uh, book one, and I don't, you know, I don't consider this a spoiler. This is from pretty early on in the story. It's the kind of thing you'd see in a movie trailer, right? But uh, uh, Brody is looking at uh, this girl who's in this uh, truck across the way, and down here it says, uh, uh, she made a move like she was going to get out of the van, and sure enough, we turn the page, she did. Okay, so uh, I've very carefully hidden this image behind the page turn so that, uh, you know, the person is, is not a dead giveaway, at the very least, uh, how she's going, going to make her big entrance. Um, you know, the, the series is called Brody's Ghost. Most people have figured out by looking at the front cover that this character is a ghost. But, at the, you know, at least we've saved some moment of surprise here uh, for the page turn. So that's something uh, definitely uh, worth considering, and that's why I put it at 
number two, I think it's a, uh, a very valuable lesson to learn. And now finally, the big number one uh, guideline for laying out comic book panels. So yes, my big uh, final top piece of advice about comic book storytelling is to leave wordless sequences wordless. Uh, so we have here a sequence where uh, Brody's on this elevated train and we hear some sound effects like gatan 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 uh, and this uh, PA system that goes psh, Lexington Heights, Lexington Heights. And after that, uh, basically, the audio disappears and it becomes purely visual storytelling. In fact, let me present it to you uh, in a series of wordless frames. Uh, and in fact, this sequence continues uh, another page without any uh, dialogue or narration at all. But I, again, I don't want to give spoilers, and that's why I'm going to stop it right here without turning the page. But um, basically, I wanted to really focus on this because I have this theory that um, visual storytelling is uh, almost always good storytelling. Uh, if uh, any of you saw the movie WALL-E, those first 40 minutes are remarkable because there's so little dialogue or narration. It's mainly visual storytelling, and uh, that's kind of what it's all about uh, for movies and for comic books. You really ought to be focusing on telling as much of the story in terms of the visuals as you can. So I thought I would uh, give that uh, top ranking, though I myself need to learn my lesson and uh, do more of this kind of thing uh, in my own stories. But uh, let's go ahead and wrap this up. I want to thank you for uh, watching this video and for bearing with um, a video in which you don't see me drawing anything. I'm a little nervous, actually, about doing this video because people have subscribed mainly to watch me draw stuff. And uh, let me know what you think. Is it okay? Am, am I allowed periodically to do a video like this? that it focuses more on gathering together uh, some information and, uh, you know, maybe uh, hard-won lessons uh, about uh, art or other topics uh, that I can convey to you uh, by way of a single video like this. Let me know what you thought. I won't be doing it too often. Certainly by next week we'll be back with another drawing video. So thanks so much for watching this one. I really hope you liked it, and I'll be back with another one real soon.